Hello, Keith Rucker here, VintageMachinery.org. Guys, a day back working on finishing up these uh, casters for the vice cart that I'm doing for my buddy Andrew Alexander out in Dallas, Texas. And uh, we're going to be working on making the axles today and uh, getting these things basically put together and complete. That is the game plan. So let's show you what we got to make and let's go get at it over there on the lathe and get these things knocked out. So this is the axle. Uh, that we need to make for it. And I think I showed this in a previous video, but we'll kind of go over it again. So let's see, the thick diameter here, looks like it's about 794, and that fits up inside of this um, hole over here. And we bored those to, uh, what was it, 825, 8, well, 8 one something, so what is that? We bored these to 13 sixteenths, which is uh, 0.8125. So this diameter, again, is uh, yeah, it's about 20 thousandths smaller, roughly. And you can see it fits up in here, but it has room to wobble. And then we go down to the actual axle diameter. These are, uh, looks like 675. And uh, the wheels, fit up on those and of course uh, spin. Now the reason for the oddball shape is is that this was designed to wobble and it just kind of gives those wheels the ability to when it's going around a curve or whatever you kind of get a little tilt going on where both wheels are staying in contact with the floor. Just a little bit of a moving around. There is a rivet that goes down through here that pins it in place. Uh, notice that it is oversized in this. Of course, it's two size um, in that right there. Um, all right, let me draw this thing up and we'll go over there and see if we can turn some out on the lathe. All right, guys, I've got a blank cut out here to length. Uh, this is the uh, same length as the originals. And uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start by turning that outside diameter, the large diameter, uh, which is what, 795? and I need to turn it down to that mark I put on there roughly. That's just a rough mark. So I'm gonna put this in the chuck. I'm gonna get as much in there as I can with just a little bit of extra room. And we're gonna turn that down. Let me change my cutter here. And we'll get started. Got a little run out on there, no big deal. I'm gonna do about a 40 thousandths cut here. I don't wanna to go too deep because of the stick out. I'm not supporting this on the end with a live center like I normally do because the originals don't have live center holes in them. So I'm a little bit concerned about chatter. Uh, when you have a long unsupported workpiece that you're turning, uh, you sometimes can get some vibrations in it. So. Uh, I'm kind of trying to overcome that by just making a little bit lighter pass than I normally would be doing. With this metal, I could easily take 100 thousandths per pass, but I'm doing about 40 thousandths here. Uh, again, just trying to keep that chatter down. All right, we'll let this turn out. I'm gonna get a good measurement on it. Uh, we'll put that in the digital readout and turn it down to 795. Coming up here where we're gonna be Stopping this first pass. Let's see, we are, we're, we're good right there. All right, let's see what our measurement is. Turn looks good. I don't have any chatter in there that I see. We're at, we're at 840. So I'm gonna put that in my digital readout, point eight four zero, And now I should be able to just uh, dial right to that uh, 795 measurement. We'll do another 40 thousandths on the depth, which will put us right at 800 thousandths on the diameter. And we'll turn it out again. And I'm just going to get a quick measurement just to make sure my digital readout is working right and it's right on the money. So we're good to go there. This last pass is uh, just gonna be fuzzing some metal off. 
Not much at all. So next step is we need to turn the actual axle diameter. Uh, this is a smaller diameter down here. That should be at 675. And guys, I'm just going to really cheat here. It needs to go in that far. And this is not a critical measurement on that depth. Uh, but instead of trying to get out measurements and stuff, I'm just going to do it that way. All right, we're going to 675. Let's take another 40 thousandths. I'm just going to test fit this with the wheel. Looks good. All right, last step on this side. I want to um, put that little point on the end. You can see on the original how that kind of comes to a point, and that's about a 10 degree angle. I've got my compound set on 10 degrees, so we'll just be sweeping that. And we'll just do it till it comes to a point. This side is done. We're gonna flip our part around. I'm gonna chuck it up to that shoulder right there. Again, I'll use my original part to measure how far in we need to go. And we're going to go into right there. Forty thousands. All right, we just got our final diameter there. That looks good. All right, we'll put our little uh, point here on the end again. And that axle is pretty well done. I need to come back and uh, put that little uh, chamfer or whatever you want to call it here to let it kind of wobble. But I'm going to do that in another setup. I'm going to go ahead and make the other two to this point and we'll come back and get that. So I'm going to get the other two cranked out and we'll be bring you back and show you that final step. All right, guys, last step on turning these is I need to kind of put a little chamfer on these uh, edges of these shoulders and kind of round that over on the top. So to do that, I've just got a uh, cutter here that I've kind of got at that angle that I want to start out with. And I'm going to finish it up with a file and just kind of roll that top over to kind of round it out. So uh, we're just going to do one side, flip it over, do the other, and then file it. And I'm not worried about that run out. This is not anything that is uh, super precision here. We're just trying to get it where it'll rotate a little bit. So there's one side. Come in here and do the other side. Same thing. All right. 
you know, a little, de little deep on that side, but I actually noticed some of the uh, originals were like that too. They probably did a similar setup here. I'm just kind of rolling that top and then we'll do the same thing over here. Just to kind of give it some uh, room to roll in there. And we'll take some emery. Kind of polish it off a little bit. There's nothing real precision on this, guys. I just need for that to have a little bit of ball action inside the center of that um, hub. All right, I'll get the other ones knocked out. So our axles are all made. Here's one of them here. And you can see it turned out just fine. Uh, very similar to the original. It goes up in that body and it's allowed to kind of wobble around, which is what we want it to do. Uh, for going around curves and so forth. This is one that's kind of uh, mocked up over here. It actually goes more like this. Uh, but you can kind of see how that caster works. Uh, we still need to um, make one more part. So these have a little washer that goes on the ends uh, that then there's a cotter pin that holds uh, the, it in place, but these washers are a little bit special. I, I don't, I can't just go buy a regular washer and be exactly like this. So I think I'm just going to make them. They, let's see, looks like it's an uh, inch and a quarter in diameter. It's about, about 140 thou thick. Let's see this one. Yeah, 140 thou thousandths thick um, and 675 roughly on the on the inside diameter. So I got some inch and a quarter stock and we're going to put that over there and we'll make six new washers. Let's go do that on the lathe. All right, we got some inch and a quarter stock in here. We're going to make these out of. We'll start by just uh, facing the front of this. Come in here next and uh, put a center drill, center hole in there to start a drill with. Just want to put a little dimple in it. Next, we're going to come in here with just a uh, drill, in this case, 3 8 And we're just going to drill a little hole down through there. This will be a pilot hole. We'll come back with a larger one here in a minute. Now we've got an 11 16 inch drill, and we're just going to go in there and open that up. And that's the bottom. I'm going to come back and just lightly uh, deburr the inside of that hole. Got a chamfer bit here, and we're going to put a pretty good chamfer on the front of that, just like the original had. Something about like that. And I got a parting tool, but I need to kind of get the back of that tool flush with the back side there like such. I'm going to zero out my uh, digital readout. We're going to use the digital readout to measure the thickness of this piece we're going to cut off. It needs to be 130 thousandths, so I'm just going to move that in now. 100 and actually 135 is uh, what the original was, which is right there. And we will part that off. Just going to use this to catch it. There we go. I'm going to make five more just like that. 
All right, we are coming together now. I got all these little uh, spacers, washers there on the end. I did uh, off camera go and just deburr that inside bore there uh, with just the same tool we used over on the lathe. I just did it on the drill press, uh, but they all fit up on there and we'll hold those in place. So, you know, the next step I think I'm gonna do here is I wanna drill the holes for the um, little the cotter pin that's gonna hold these in place. With my thought being that we would go ahead and, and put those on temporarily to get the position of where that center hole needs to be. And then we'll just drill through all of it together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here with a Sharpie pen and I'm gonna mark uh, right there where I need the uh, where I need my cotter pin at, and we'll do this on all of them, and we'll go get those drilled out. I'll pull all these shafts out, and I will go get set up. He's on the drill press for middle machine. I'll have to figure that out and uh, get those holes drilled. So I think I'm just gonna do this over on the drill press. I've just got a couple of V blocks here to hold this in place, keep it from rolling around. And I'm just gonna come down on that mark. Right there. And we'll drill that through. All right. First one. We'll flip this part around. We've got another mark there. Here we go. All right. I'm going to do the other ones just like it. I need to deburr those holes. I'll probably just do that by hand. And uh, we'll have the first part of our drilling done here. So we're ready to drill the hole through the body here that will have the rivet that goes through, pins that in place. And to do this, what I did was I just turned a little stub axle here that this will fit down on. I've got it sitting in my vise on some um, V blocks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position, this is actually the bottom side that I'm drilling from. So I'm, I'm positioning my holes so that the uh, cotter pins are coming through from the other side. And we're gonna come in here and get lined up right there in the center of that shaft. And we're gonna drill the quarter inch hole all the way through. And that is pretty darn good right there. Away we go. I will note that I've got all these shafts numbered and to the sides so I know which side they go on. There's a mark there. I got a mark on the end here. And that makes sure I get these put back in the same place on the same ones. So everything will line up later on. So we'll come down, kind of get that hole started. And we'll engage our power feed and let it do the work going down through there. All right. Let's get the other ones done. All right, guys, with the hole drilled in there, and that one didn't go quite down the center, but it's going to be fine. I will note that I oversized drilled that hole there. I took it over to the drill press and we drilled it out a little bit oversized. And there we go. I know I marked which side goes in here. It's like this. 
and my rivet drops down through there and I've got a good swivel action in there. So now I just need to go and uh, rivet that in place. Now the rivets are a little bit on the long side. I couldn't get them the exact size I needed. So I'm just gonna kind of come in here with a cutoff disc and shorten that up and then we'll go to the anvil and uh, paint it over. All right, let's meet you over at the anvil. So I'm over here at the anvil and we're gonna peen it over. So we'll just uh, flip it upside down and uh, using a ball peen hammer. We'll just start by flattening it. And then we'll kind of paint it around. And that is going to do the trick right there. We'll get the other ones done just like that. I think we're ready to do the final assembly here. So we'll put our axle on. I'm going to just spin this a little bit. You know, I'm getting a little bit of rubbing right here. I'm just going to hit that with the angle grinder. There's just a little clearance there. And I want to make sure. I want to make sure that we don't have any interference on these wheels. a little bit. I think I need to kind of taper it out a little bit more. That's much better. All right, let's try the other side now. That side field looks pretty good. We'll put our... Uh, The washers there on the end and I want the pin to go down this is to be the upside so that gravity is always working in our favor and just kind of take her for a spin here I think that is going to be fine so we will um, expand these out And that caster is finished. I like it. All right, I'm gonna get the other ones assembled and we'll be knocked out. Have this project knocked out. Well, there we go, guys. Our uh, vice casters, vice cart casters are all finished, all put together, all assembled. Everything is ready and looks good. I'm very happy with how these turned out. Uh, I think they're going to work just fine for what they're going to be used for. And uh, yeah, we saved some more old American iron uh, from being no good and putting it back into good use, uh, which is it's what I live to do. That's what I love to do. So uh, there you go. Happy with how those turned out. Well, there we go. Once again, uh, that is a wrap. We have these, this project all knocked out, ready to go. I'm going to get these uh, packaged up and ready to ship back out to Andrew. And uh, I think he's going to be sending some over to uh, another guy, Vice for Vices, on Instagram. Two of these are for him. One of them is for Andrew. And then I think uh, this is the original one that Vice for Vices on Instagram had that we used as our pattern and 
master so that we could kind of get our dimensions and everything like we needed. So with that, guys, uh, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Uh, please leave those comments down below. It really helps as well as those thumbs up. That really helps as well uh, with the uh, algorithms on YouTube, which uh, <laughs> we're always trying to look as good as we can on. And uh, as always, too, a big, huge thank you, all the supporters out there who support uh, the site here, uh, support the website, support this channel uh, financially or through in kind with uh, uh, through Patreon, through PayPal, through sending stuff through the mail, whatever. Uh, greatly appreciate all your efforts as well, because we couldn't do all this without you. And uh, guys, with that, that is a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.